So we're going to start our project with a piece of 3 8 by 3 inch. I've cut this 12 inches long. So that's the same as 10 millimeter by 75 millimeter by 360 millimeter. Now this would be quick and efficient under the power hammer, but we'll do it by hand at the anvil, just so you know you don't have to have a power hammer to do these things. I'm working with about a four pound rounding hammer here. Just want to keep it centered. Okay, that's at two inches now, and I'm really glad because that's about all the swinging of a four pound hammer I can do. As they say, I'm getting too old for this stuff. That's why I own the power hammer. I'm going to let that cool and then lay out for a decorative chisel groove along both sides. I'll set the line cold with the chisel and then we'll heat it up and deepen that line and make it a much bolder line, but it's a lot easier to start this cold. There are some logistical reasons this anvil does not work well with a hold fast, so I need to figure out some new and more inventive ways of holding material down. But since the treadle hammer is my preferred tool anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and finish this over there.
Got a couple of bad blows right there, but I think the candle dish is going to cover that. Pays to check every single blow and make sure you haven't bounced out. Next thing I want to do is upset the ends of these, let it spread a little bit, but mostly thicken so it looks a little bit more ornamental. Upset's done on both ends, and I think I've got the hole centered. We'll have to measure that again when it's cool and make sure that it's perfectly centered. If not, we'll either have to draw out the short end or upset the long end back a little bit to make the whole thing centered. So we're going to let that cool and address ourselves to the dish that will catch the wax. Go with quarter inch. The widest piece of quarter inch I have available right now is four and a half inches or about 115 millimeters. So that's six millimeter by 115. So to do this, first thing I want to do is find the center point and then I'll use a compass and scribe a round line on this and probably cut it out on the bandsaw. The little porta band won't cut quite that tight a radius, so I'll still need to go to the grinder to clean this up. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. You can use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for a discount on your next order. Okay, there's our disc all cut out and ready to go. Let's heat it up and see if we can maybe upset the edge of it a little bit just to make it match the other piece some. Next, let's go to the vise and use a swedge and round that over some. I'm using the rawhide mallet because I don't want to ding up that edge we just worked so hard to create. It will lean into the middle a little bit because of the swedge, but it would be hard to avoid that completely. That was pretty simple. Since it's not practical to turn this over while punching a hole, I'm going to use the base plate as a bolster so I can punch through cleanly from the front side. Next thing is to clean up the holes in these by running a drill bit through there just to make sure they're a consistent size and diameter. Even here, you're going square to octagon, then round. So 
So I'll cut this off a little longer than I think I need in the long run, and then we'll finish rounding it up. I'm using the rawhide mallet so I don't mess up any of the detail that's put into this. I think it's a little tall. I'm going to bring it down and make it more of a semicircle than a half circle. This is why a lot of cone mandrels have a slot cut in them so your tongs have a place to go. Well at this point we're one rivet short of a candle holder. Is that sort of like being a few pepperoni short of a pizza? I don't know. Maybe that's not such a good thing. So with that said, let's install the rivet. That's just going to go in through here. And with the kind of freeform rivet head, we don't really need a bottom rivet set, so that's going to be nice. That goes on there. You can see that this just barely sticks up, and that should give us a nice flush rivet with this so it doesn't interfere with the candle sitting on the base. And I want to clean that up with a little flatter so I can get most of those ball peen marks out because it's the only place you see that kind of ball peen hammer mark and I would rather not see it at all. I think that's much better. So that is our completed candle holder, except for finish. And I'm just going to heat this a little bit evenly, just warm enough to melt some wax and put my usual Johnson's Paste Wax finish on there. Just a little bit of smoke is ideal. This may be a little bit too hot. 
but that way you know the wax is really soaking into the pores on the surface and you get a better finish that way. It's kind of like seasoning a cast iron skillet. Then wipe any excess off so you don't have any drips and drooly bits on there. And we are no longer one rivet short of a candle holder. There is our finished candle holder or candle stand or support or whatever you want to call this thing. And I was lucky enough to find just the perfect candle for it at the grocery store this morning. A little bit of a breeze in here. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.